Hi, I'm Charlie. I wanted to share with you today an article I came across in Bloomberg that talks about the chances of recession. Uh, it also was pretty interesting because the article has a uh, probability indicator of recessions, if you will. It's been a little quiet lately. We haven't had any recession talk. The markets have had a, a, a really good uh, last couple months. The third quarter was kind of flat, but it's been a pretty nice 2019. Uh, maybe because the trade talk has, has been positive lately, but the recession talk has been down. And I wanted to talk about it again, specifically for that reason, something we need to think about. So I found this article, Bloomberg, very interesting. First thing I thought was interesting is the article notice does not say risk of no recession in the next 12 months is 76, 74%. Doesn't say that, it wouldn't sell. But that sounds a little better to me, no, uh, the, according to this article anyway. And whether that's uh, even accurate at all is another question that we'll go over. So what I'd like to talk about today is can we t determine when we enter a recession, when we get out of it, does the market even correlate with that? And, and the answer is no, it doesn't. There's no clear signal we're in a recession. There's no clear signal when we're out. In fact, we don't even know we're out of a recession or sometimes into a recession until it's almost over. That's just the way they measure it. And it's measured three to six to nine months delayed because by the time they get them for information, et cetera. So it's very difficult. There's no magic signal to know when we're going into a recession, when we're coming out. Furthermore, is the stock market going to perfectly correlate with that as well? It's not, and it never does. So let's just start really real quick and see where we're at. I wanted to start with December of 2018, most of you knew that was a terrible month last year, one of the worst months we've had in a long, long time. In fact, the fourth quarter of 2018 was pretty terrible. But the thing I found fascinating was we had a 20% decline from the peak, I think it was August, September, until December 24th. Most people don't even know that because it was, it was intra-year. I mean, it happened within the year, and it didn't happen from January 1st to December 31st. Most of the time, I'll show in a second, we average almost 14% decline intra-year almost every single year. So it gives you an idea of what to expect in the stock market. The last December, there was almost a 50% chance of recession. Clearly, we've had a, a much better 2019. The first quarter of 2019 was great. Had you sold in December and not got back in at the right exact right time, your investment returns would be much, much different because most of those returns came right in the first quarter of 2019. And that is very typical. When we have a downturn or a, or a uh, correction, which is 10% or more from its peak, most of the time it recovers in short spurts right after that. And if you miss that, you're gonna miss out on the majority of the return and you'll never get that return back. So just a couple things I wanted to point out here real quickly. <clears throat> You may remember in 2011, we had a, a lot of double dip recession talk, never really happened. Had a 20, 28% chance then, uh, let's say 2012, that's, that's uh, in, in November, but uh, 2012 was interesting. I'll show you a quick headline real quick. 2012 headline, this is yahoo.com, I believe, bull market enters fourth year. So that's pretty incredible. In 2012, we're already talking about a bubble. You may remember that. And uh, you may be able to see in the small print right there, S&P 500 is set to fall 15%, says top strategist. Clearly that didn't happen. The other thing I wanna stress is 2016 was an interesting year. In the beginning of the year, January 2016 was one of the worst Januaries we've had in, in a long time. I think I have a headline for that too in a second. However, January in, in 2016 in general turned out to be a great year. Let me see if I can highlight that. This is the Vanguard Wellington, a balanced uh, 65 stock, 35 bond fund. Uh, it returned 11% for 2016. And uh, just pick that one because it's a good generic investment to, to, uh, to use as a, as a gauge. Uh, a little dip here you may notice and may remember is, was Brexit. That was a scary time. We thought Europe, Brexit would spread a recession to the U.S. That never happened. And I uh, just want to be clear, we don't know when a recession is going to happen. It's probably going to happen at some point, but we're going to talk today about how to be ready for that, okay? Uh, the, uh, finally, before we move on, um, I just wanted to talk about, uh, here's the headline. There we go. I found the headline, January 2016, the Dow hasn't started a year so badly in 84 years. 
that's enough to scare you right out of the markets. If you trusted these headlines, trusted the so-called experts that are writing these headlines, you're going to sell everything and you're going to miss out on 2016, which was a great year even for a balanced type mutual fund, uh, ETF, whatever. So what do we do if we have a recession? Well, firstly, we, we, we're going to have a recession, and that's okay. That's a natural part of the economy. We don't know when that's going to happen. We don't need to worry about when that's going to happen because we have a plan, right? So you can see these gray bars here are when recessions have happened. You can see early 2000, 2007, uh, excuse me, 2008, the Great Recession, uh, great uh, is, is circled there. The markets continue to go up over the long term. We don't know what's going to happen in the short term. Benjamin Graham, one of the greatest investors ever, Warren Buffett's mentor, said the stock market is a voting machine in the short term because it's very psychological, based on headlines, short-term events. We don't need to worry about that. We need to stick to our long-term game plan. A couple of things I wanted to show you. Step number one, do not try to time these headlines, the short-term swings in the markets, because this is what's going to happen. You can see in this headline, this is from JP Morgan Asset Management. They got the data from Morningstar. But basically this shows if you would have missed the 10 best days in the S&P 500 from 1999 to 2018, your return would go from an annualized 5.6% to 2.01%. Can you imagine basing your retirement plan on a return of 2%, which historically is less than inflation? So that is the risk. You can try to time the markets if you want, but it is the most risky thing you can do. There are many, many more options you have uh, to try to, to help protect yourself, and we'll talk about those. The second thing I want to talk about is understand your risk, understand your time horizon. The green bar here is 100% stock. You can see in one year, anything can happen. So if you need money one to five years, it ought not to be in 100% stocks. You probably know that. But as the time horizon increases, you can see out here a 20 year rolling period from 1950 to 2015 has performed seven to 17%. So time horizon, understand your risk and understand the next thing we're gonna talk about, which is diversification. This is what diversification looks like in 2008, the great recession. The bottom line here is the S&P 500. It's been the greatest thing since sliced bread since 2009. Everybody wants to be there. Nothing in the world has beaten that index, but you need to have other tools in the toolbox for diversification. When the going gets rough, you need to have some other players on the team, so to speak. And this would have saved you had you been close to retirement during that time. This is the little perspective I was talking about earlier. Most of the time, we average almost a 14% intra-year drop in the S&P 500. However, 21 of the last 30 years have been positive. I think that's amazing because if we were to really pay close attention throughout the year, it might drive us crazy. Again, broaden that scope, think long term. The last thing I'll say today is if we have a recession, and again, these are monies that you don't need five to 10 years, keep buying great companies. Sometimes we forget that inside that mutual fund or exchange traded fund, there are amazing companies like Apple, Amazon, Exxon Mobil, and even some foreign companies like uh, HSBC, BP, Nestle. So keep buying those companies. Just because the mutual fund or the market has gone down, your money appears to be going down. That's a temporary price decline, I like to say. It's painful, don't get me wrong. I understand that. Keep buying great companies. Thank you very much.